Hey doing guys, welcome to another video. We're still on topic four. Today we look at Lewis structures and this one's a pretty important video. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so volume four, covalent structures. What is a Lewis structure? And then we talk about electron domains. The IB understandings focus around Lewis structures we also need to review the octet rule and then we look at some exceptions to that octet rule but mainly it's in the applications where we need to be able to deduce or draw the Lewis dot structures for a number of different compounds. So the number of covalent bonds that an atom will form will depend directly on the number of electrons it needs to fill its valence shell. So if we look at something in group 17, fluorine, it wants to gain one electron to have a full outer shell. Oxygen, two electrons. Nitrogen, three. Carbon, four. And that tells us the number of covalent bonds that it will form. Things in group 17 will form one covalent bond. Carbon will form four covalent bonds. The octet rule refers to the tendency of atoms to gain to make a full valence shell with a total of eight electrons. There's a couple of exceptions, boron and beryllium, want to have less than eight electrons and sulfur can actually expand its octet to have more than eight electrons. Lewis or electron dot structures are constructed to show the electrons in the outer shell and we must show all of the electrons in the outer shell including the non-bonding. So for example chlorine gas. Chlorine is in group 17 it wants to gain one electron because it has seven electrons in its outer shell. That means it has three pairs of non-bonding electrons and one electron that can undergo bonding, a bonding electron. So if another chlorine atom comes along with the exact same configuration, those two unpaired electrons could form a single covalent bond. The two chlorine atoms will share one electron each to form a chlorine molecule and in that process there will be eight electrons in each of the atom's outer shells. So we can represent that using a Lewis diagram. The green highlighting, that is the bonding pair of electrons. The yellow highlighting, that is the non-bonding pair of electrons. A single covalent bond is sharing of one pair of electrons or two electrons. So we need to be able to draw diagrams for Lewis structures for a whole bunch of different molecules. So a diagram, a Lewis diagram represents the valence electron shell and we can use either dots or crosses to represent the structures. So the first one, ammonia, NH3. Nitrogen wants to gain three electrons, so it will share three electrons. So it's got three electrons that can undergo bonding. Hydrogen, it's only got one electron in its outer shell, it can only share one, so it can only form one covalent bond. So the nitrogen, with its lone pair sticking out the top, could form three single covalent bonds with the hydrogens. So the hydrogen will come along and it will pair its electron up with nitrogen's bonding electrons to form ammonia, NH3. Water has oxygen atoms, and oxygen atoms have six electrons in the outer shell. So an oxygen atom has two bonding electrons. It also has two pairs of non-bonding electrons. So when water forms a molecule, the hydrogen will come along and donate one of its electrons to the bond between the O and the H, and then the other hydrogen will come and also contribute one electron to the bond, forming two single covalent bonds. Methane, a carbon, carbon has four bonding electrons. Hydrogen, again, can only have one bonding electron. So what can happen here is carbon can share four electrons with four different hydrogens to form four single covalent bonds. The carbon giving one electron for the bond and the hydrogen giving one electron to the bond four single bonds, single bonds because they contain only one pair of electrons. 
if we have molecules that are a little bit more challenging, we need to think a little bit more about these ones. So these ones might contain double or even triple covalent bonds. So carbon dioxide, CO2, carbon has four electrons in the outer shell. It wants to share four electrons. Oxygen has six electrons in the outer shell. It wants to share two electrons. So if we think logically about this, then the carbon, well, it could share two electrons with one of the oxygens, leaving it with two free electrons, and then it can share the other two electrons with the other oxygen. Both of them will be happy. They'll both have eight electrons in the outer shell, so they will have a full octet. The sharing of four electrons, two electron pairs, forms a double covalent bond. Ethene, C2H4. The way to think about this one is the carbons must be connected together because hydrogens can only form one single bond. So a hydrogen must be connected to each of the carbons. So it shares its one electron with the carbons, which gives carbon two electrons shared between the hydrogens. So that leaves carbon with a number of electrons that it can share. It can share four electrons in the bond, giving it a double bond. So we'll have a double bond between the two carbon atoms. Ethane, C2H6, is similar to ethene in that the two carbons will be connected together and then there will be three hydrogens attached to each of the carbon. That leaves carbon with one electron to share between its neighbouring carbon, which gives it a single covalent bond. Okay, phosphorus, phosphine. Phosphorus is in the same group as nitrogen, so it will do a very similar thing with its bonding. It will still have five electrons in the outer shell, so it has three electrons that it can share with. We have three hydrogen atoms, so each will form a single covalent bond. Sulfur, sulfur is in the same group as oxygen, and it will tend to do a similar thing, except when it expands its octet, and in this case it doesn't it will form two single covalent bonds with the hydrogens, so there'll be a sharing of one electron pair between hydrogen and sulfur. Hydrogen cyanide, however, is a slightly different. The carbon is the thing that can undergo the most covalent bonding, so it's most likely going to be in the middle. It can share one electron with the hydrogen, forming a single covalent bond, leaving three electrons to bond with nitrogen. Nitrogen, having five electrons in the outer shell, will happily share its three electrons with carbon to form a triple covalent bond. So here are a couple of exceptions. There's a few molecules that form exceptions to the octet rule. Those ones are beryllium and boron, and they are actually stable with less than eight electrons in the outer shell. We describe this as being an incomplete octet. So beryllium, beryllium can form two single bonds between it and a non-metal. So beryllium only has two electrons in the outer shell, so it can only share those two electrons. So it can form BeCl2 with two single covalent bonds between two chlorine atoms. The beryllium only has four electrons in the outer shell, so we say that it is electron deficient. Things that are electron deficient tend to accept electron pairs and form what we call a coordinate compound, which comes up a little bit later. Boron trifluoride does a similar thing. Boron has three electrons in its outer shell, so it can only bond with three other electrons, giving it six electrons in its outer shell. So it forms three covalent bonds with fluorine, for example, giving the boron only six electrons in its outer shell. Six electrons, that's less than eight, so it is also electron deficient in that it does not have a full octet. The 
final thing for this video talks about an electron domain. An electron domain refers to a pair of electrons on a central atom. And these pairs can be in the form of single, double or triple covalent bonds or a pair of non-bonding electrons. So for example, the hydrogen cyanide molecule is shown below. How many electron domains does the central carbon atom contain? Well, it contains a single carbon to hydrogen covalent bond and a triple carbon to nitrogen bond. Now, the number of electron domains is the number of regions where electrons can be found. So this is two electron domains. There's electrons that are found between the carbon and the hydrogen, and then between the carbon and the nitrogen. So there's only two electron domains in that molecule. Okay, so volume A, some top tips. In a Lewis diagram, always remember to put the lone pairs, and it takes practice to get used to drawing these Lewis diagrams. I recommend using a couple of different colours to help you at the start. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you